Hello, in this video, let's understand what is BERT and how it is working. Not many people know the full name of BERT, but knowing the full name actually helps to understand how the BERT is working. Here I highlighted important words from each name. Let's deep dive what is bidirectional encoder from Transformer. Transformer is a state-of-art deep learning model mostly for motion translation using encoder-decode architecture introduced by Google in 2017. The Transformers encoder is the bidirectional encoder, and the decoder is left to right direction in decoder. There is an interesting history why BERT comes out with a bidirectional encoder. You will get to know it. At this moment, let's just remember there was already GPT-1, which is another great NLP model by OpenAI in 2018 and using the left to right direction transformer decoder. GPT-1 proved the power of generative training of language model. GPT is basically language model which can predict next words just like this slide. Training language model can be unsupervised, since you can use previous tokens as train data and the next token as desired prediction. Even with one sentence from this slide, you can create three training data set. Training language model can be unsupervised, since you can use previous tokens as train data and the next token as desired prediction. Even with one sentence from this slide, you can create three training data set. And then without human label data, GPT can be trained to predict the next word. All you need for GPT train is tremendous data. Indeed, filtering only qualified and clean data is one of very important steps for GPT. Nowadays, there are tremendous texts in the internet, and also there is continuous improving on filtering good quality data. Obviously, GPT is one of the promising NLP deep learning model. Now, the funny story is here. BERT came out after GPT-1 in 2018 by Google, and we know the Google is the inventor of Transformer. They introduced BERT right after GPT-1, and directly say that the GPT, which uses left-to-right decoder of Transformer, may serve optimal for sentence-level task, and it could be harmful when applying fine-tuned based approaches, such as question answering, where it is crucial to incorporate context from both directions. Therefore, Google introduced BERT, which uses encoder of Transformer, which incorporates text from both directions. Why don't we brush up how the transformer is working? Let's start with the bidirectional encoder. When the sentence input comes in transformer's bidirectional encoder, every tokens are combined with the positional encoding, and attention vector gets generated at once by matrix calculation. Attention vector helps the model to understand each token's semantic meaning by looking at all tokens in the sentence. For example, if you look only one token, it is ambiguous to say what text means and what message means in here. Text may mean text in a newspaper, and message may mean a verbal notice from someone. Here is a simple way to understand how attention mechanism is working. Each token will look all tokens in input sentence, and find the most possible semantic meaning of a token. Since text came with message, attention can help model to understand it means sending a message. And since message came with text, the attention output for message will represent the written text. Attention vector goes to fully connected layer, and the original transformer repeat this step six times, and the output of encoders are used in transformer decoder. Remember, there was no sequence or left to right action in bidirectional encoder. Now the decoder generates output using encoder's output and starts a special token. Decoder generates output from left to right. The decoder keeps generated output from left to right using previously generated decoder's output and encoder's output. Until the decoder outputs a special end token, decoder also repeats attention to fully connected layer step six times. So we can now see the Korean translated version of I am a boy. I believe this summary should be enough to go to next slide, but if you are more interested in the how transformer is working with more mathematical detail, 
I highly suggest you watch Transformer tutorial of mine, which I linked on top of this video. Even if you are not sure about Transformer, let's just remember this. The encoder incorporates context from both directions, and the decoder incorporates context from only left side. It is not a stupid question to ask if BERT is a language model. And yes, BERT is the language model. It is just not a language model we are familiar with. Normally, language model is being trained left to right just like the left side example in this slide, or just like the GPT example we saw from previous slides. Traditional language model's training objective function is to predict the next token using old and current token. So you can see from the slide, traditional language model is being trained to predict doing when the input is how are you. On the other hand, BERT has a different training objective function. BERT is being trained to predict masked token. The masked token is just a hidden token, and BERT is being trained to predict this hidden token. And there are tons of texts we can use for BERT training. Absolutely, you don't need any human labeling for this training. All you need is just randomly mask some tokens and train BERT to predict this masked token. To make BERT handle a variety of downstream tasks, BERT input represents both a single sentence and a pair of sentences in one token sequence. Think about the natural language processing task like question and answering. You will need to give context and question in one sequence of input. You can see the example where two different sentences as one input to BERT. CLS is a special token to be used for classification, which is the aggregated sequence representation. Two different sentences are separated by special token SEP. And if you look deeper, each tokens are calculated by summing positional encoding and segment embedding for differentiating two different sentences. BERT uses word piece embedding. What is word piece? It provides efficient tokenizing than word-by-word -word tokenization. We can see tokens in a red box that the play is tokenized in two separate tokens play and ing, since play and ing has its own semantic information. And it also reduces out of vocabulary risk as well. Here is an example where word piece helps out of vocabulary issues and keeping semantic information. You may not have texting in your train data, but word piece split this one word into text and ing, and we know text and ing are pretty common word, and each chunk has its meaning. Segment embedding is just the same embedding to each sentence. This embedding is for distinguishing two different sentences in one input. Positional embedding provides each token's relative position information. Model learns E1's location is before E2, and E3 is after E2. Positional embedding uses sign and cosine value, and there are secrets why this helps on positional encoding. First, sign and cosine output different value for each position as a number. Second, sign and cosine output is deterministically increase and decrease for each position, so it is easy for model to learn the position from the embedding. Third, sine and cosine graph has no limit on input and always output value from minus 1 to 1. This enables model can provide positional embedding for any longer sentence. Okay, now we understand pre-training of BERT. And before we go over to fine-tuning of BERT, let's brush up what is the main difference between GPT and BERT. First, BERT is a bidirectional LM, while GPT is left to right LM. Second, BERT is meant to be fine-tuned, while GPT is not. Here is an easy-to-understand diagram showing the difference between BERT and GPT. Orange circle stands for pre-trained model. You can see the pre-trained GPT works well on multiple NLP tasks without fine-tuning, but it is very big. BERT is smaller, and it needs particular fine-tuning for each NLP task. It is also true that fine-tuned model is good on each NLP task, but it may bad on other NLP tasks. 
Training GPT is very expensive, but once it has been well trained, it can be reused for multiple use cases. Training BERT is relatively cheaper, but you should fine tune the pre trained BERT for your use case. Finally, let's talk about fine tuning. Pre training of BERT is already been done, and all you need is downloading the pre trained model and fine tune it. BERT provides examples how to fine tune for each NLP task. First example is four sentence pair classification just like classifying the relationship between given two sentences. Now you should know the BERT input can have two sentences as input with a special SEP token and the first special CLS token is for classification task. When you train for sentence pair classification, you input two sentences and train the CLS token to be the answer. Next example is easier than previous example. For sentence classification task, you only input one sentence during training and let the CLS token to be the answer. Next example is for question and answering. Input has a question sentence and paragraph sentence. You train last tokens to have start and end span, which is the answer from the paragraph. Last but not least, you also can fine tune BERT for sentence tagging. Since each token has a corresponding output, we can train the output to be the tagging of the token. And here is the performance report. BERT base is nearly same size with GPT-1 and BERT large is larger model than that. And we can see both models recorded outperformed on the all tasks. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. All informations are from the BERT research paper as you can see from this slide. I will see you with more interesting topics from next video. Thank you.